Welcome to the Lipis Report. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Lippis. I'm here at Cisco Live with Steve Salita from NetScout, Vice President of Marketing. Hi Steve, how are you? Good, how's everything, Nick? Excellent, great, good. very good. I'm really glad to be here. And um, we're gonna be talking about, uh, I think a really important topic, and it's the transition that's happening in the marketplace from status quo towards open networking and all the open networking technologies that are now starting to flow into the network. And you need to maintain an application performance as you make this transition. So there's no other company that's better positioned than NetScout to like help in answering this question. So NetScout is positioned to monitor traffic across the stack that spans from applications to the network. At the Open Networking User Group for ONUG Spring, hosted by Citigroup in New York City, IT business leaders discussed how they are transitioning to open networking technologies such as network virtualization or overlays, software-defined WANs and LANs, Linux-based tools to automate the configuration and change management of networking, storage, and servers, OpenStack, white box-based underlays, and much, much more. With no two firms at the same point of transition, what was very clear is that all are in transition. Branch office wide area networking is undergoing a fundamental transition towards software defined model as represented by Gap Inc., Cigna, JP Morgan, and Pfizer. Data center networking is transitioning toward low cost white box underlays with network virtualization overlays as discussed by Citigroup and AT&T and many others. But there are a number of software based overlay technologies that create issues in performance, integration with physical devices and management across overlay and underlay domains. More critically though, overlays focused on virtualizing the network as it is today rather than refocusing on the needs and requirements of applications. They also hinder visibility by separating underlay and overlay environments, creating complexity. Even with these difficulties, overlays are being deployed thanks to the huge demand for VM to VM networking. As the transition to open networking technologies progresses, NetScout seeks to add value by minimizing disruption and preserving excellent user experience by being a bridge between the old and new worlds of open networking. We'll find out how in this Lipis Report podcast as I talk with Steve Shalita of NetScout. NetScout is positioned to monitor traffic across the stack that spans from applications to networking. How is NetScout positioned to assist IT business leaders as they transition to open networking? That's the first question that I have for Steve. So Steve, how do you help them? Well, I, I mean, think massive change. We're on the verge of massive change from, from, from a networking perspective, and we've seen you know, a number of transitions happen in, in the industry. John Chambers was talking about it two days ago in, in a massive way. You know, NetScout's well positioned because we sit within the network architecture and regardless of how that architecture changes and layers um, get, get added, we're able to help our customers kind of deal with and meet those 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 changes in real time. It's it's a software-based architecture to start with. So what we're doing within our technology is software-based as well. Sure, there's a hardware component that's enabling the, the, the monitoring itself, but what's running it all, our adaptive session intelligence, is software-defined. And, and so the adaptiveness of that technology will allow our customers and users of our technology to easily change as network changes. See, applications, yeah. the services being delivered is really a collection of protocols and applications running in the background and network equipment. As open networking, software-defined networking starts to take place and, and we see another set of layers, as you call it, you know, really the, the overlay and the underlay network starting to take hold, you just expand your visibility into each of those areas. The key is to be able to see all that traffic be able to understand what's happening in the interactions and ultimately correlate it back into real user sessions, yeah. right? In, into those performance Yeah, I think you, you picked up on a really key point, and that is uh, there's a lot of uh, activity around uh, overlays, so like network virtualization, a whole bunch of different controllers entering into the marketplace. Uh, the underlay is going through a transition as well. We've gone from like three tiers to two tier uh, based networking but the industry is kind of structured around one approach or the other. Um, so either you're an underlay company or you're, or you're an overlay company. And so there's no one really other than NetScout that has been able to now kind of be able to provide views, monitoring of both the overlay and the underlay. So um, can you talk a little bit about like how NetScout is now positioning itself you know, for 
providing that total view of a basically overlay and underlay networking? Right, especially as the network becomes virtualized and we start adding in layers and separating the, the switch cluster and the controller piece and adding a new dimension of control plane in there. You, you know, we're widely deployed on Cisco networks and, and Cisco networks are, are a huge, huge part of the market and, and, and the large network environments. But, but we maintain a vendor agnostic kind of position. It really is about leveraging the network as a vantage point as opposed to monitoring the network itself in, 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 in a single view, right? The network is a means to the end and what it gives us access to is the packets which represent these, these conversations or these communications uh, happenings. So by sitting on the network, even if that network gets into six or seven layers, we're able to get visibility because we're looking at that, that network traffic in real time. We're, we're doing deep packet inspection on every packet, every second that's crossing the network. It's not a sample environment or let's look at some pieces. We're looking at everything, analyzing that traffic in real time. So if I add additional layers, I want to talk about you know a, a, a top layer of the network or in the data center or a hybrid data center where I've got pieces running on premise, pieces running in the cloud, maybe other pieces running in another data center. Regardless of overlay, underlay, we sit within that network tier and and gather all this intelligence from an IP perspective and and correlate. Correlation is really one of the key issues. You've got this big data realm which is taking data from a bunch of disparate devices, right? And ultimately that's, that, that's a collection of dirty data and you bring it into a middleware layer that's gonna process it, try and put it together and turning it into something meaningful, right? Data to information. That, that's really, really hard to do. And that middleware layer becomes a, a scalability factor, right? It becomes an obstacle to scale. The approach that we've taken is really to distribute that architecture into the appliances, use ASI, which which allows us to do all of this processing in real time, generate very flexible metadata that we can then manipulate and correlate to give you a true Indian view, top to bottom, right? From that overlay to the mid tier to the underlay network and all the application pieces. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's, as you're talking, Steve, it's like, it's like you guys are really becoming positioned in like the major enabler, you know, for open networking to happen because if you start moving into open networking, you don't have the visibility, then it's going to slow down. But if you have the visibility from the overlays, the underlays, the virtualization of the networking services, and you can do network analytics uh, on that and monitor you know, networks, then you're, you're basically providing an insurance policy and also a way in which IT architects and the various different silos can manage applications as they transition the network from point A to point B right now. Right. So, all of the piece points that that or uh, products that the NetScout has, like what are like maybe one or two key uh, products that we should be really thinking about uh, to help in that transition? Well, and, and, and I think a, a couple of key thoughts within that. So so the products today are going to evolve just like That's the networking true. industries evolved, right? Today we have the, the ingenious Infinistream, for example, which is the, the appliance that's used for monitoring. It comes in a bunch of different configurations and storage, but that really is the key thing. But what's running in that is ASI, our adaptive session intelligence. And I think what you'll see over the next couple of years, probably less than that, is that ASI technology becomes more virtualized. Today we can deploy in Cisco routers, in, in a, a, a virtualized server environment to look at hypervisor traffic. But that probe, while it's still very important, that appliance, I think you're gonna see that change over time and become more virtualized with network function virtualization changing things, but also because of network virtualization needing to get in other places. That's the key. That's the foundation of a monitoring architecture. Something like our ingenious packet flow switch, the network monitoring switch becomes critical to facilitate connectivity in, into all these different network links, right? There's a whole market and those are specialized switches. It's not like a Catalyst or a Nexus product that's, that's based upon doing enterprise connectivity. This is very specialized to do monitoring, full-time connectivity, streaming that traffic upstream to security devices and other kinds of, of, of platforms as well. But, but the core, right, is that Infinistream, which is getting the, the, the visibility, and then the Ingenious One Analytics platform, which is taking all of that data, synthesizing it, allowing the analytics, 
providing service views, providing session views and a dashboard, that really becomes the key window into performance. All right, so it's really, it's, it's data capture, um, data processing, and then um, analytics um, right. back up. So that's, that's great. Excellent. Well, um, that's all the time that we have for this particular uh, podcast. So, uh, Steve, thank you very much. Thanks very uh, much for joining us here. And um, actually, I was really impressed. Like NetScout to me is really is positioned here to really help in this transition towards open networking. So, uh, Steve, again, I want to thank you again for uh, being with us, and thank you all for watching as well. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lipis Report newsletter, go to www.lipisreport.com. To sponsor the Lipis Report podcast, send email to sales at lipis.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.